everyone, Vindicator Jones here. Today I'm going to go through what I think are the best ship choices for bounty hunting and what ships to think about when it comes time to upgrading. I am often asked what I think are the best ships for bounty hunting and what ship they should choose next for their upgrade. I've been reluctant to make specific suggestions as I feel ship choices are very personal and what one person might feel comfortable in, another person might not. However, today I shall share with you what I have learned after earning over a billion credits just from bounty hunting alone in practically every ship in Elite Dangerous. I will also go through upgrade and side grade options and discuss some of their pros and cons. So technically, this video is going to be directed mostly towards new commanders and those just coming up through their combat ranks. Now, let me be clear. If I don't mention your favorite ship, don't get your knickers in a twist. The truth is you can bounty hunt in any ship. Hell, I have bounty hunted in a Type 6 with no weapons and just ram targets to death. Also, I'll only be covering small pad ships to medium pad ones. As for new commanders, this should pretty much cover everything. I might make a video about large pad ships should this video get enough likes. First of all, yes it's true, any ship can be used for bounty hunting, however this is my list of ships that I feel are best suited for that task. Whether you're new to Elite Dangerous and just coming out of your Sidewinder, or a seasoned commander now working on their combat rank, choosing the right ship for bounty hunting can be a bit confusing. I'm going to use a standard A-rate combat build with pulse lasers and multi cannons as a base for comparisons. I'm not including core armor here as this can increase costs dramatically and the results can vary wildly. This is my general go-to build for new pilots who are wanting to get into bounty hunting as it is an efficient build that is not too taxing on a power distributor and allows commanders to spend around 30 minutes in a resource extraction site without having to rearm. All ships will have a kill warrant scanner as this is essential to maximize profits. Also, I won't go into too much detail for each ship, otherwise this video is going to take a very long time. I will briefly go over the pros and cons for each ship I've selected, just so you can get a relatively good idea of what to expect from each ship. So if I miss anything or gloss over anything, just pop a reminder in the comments section below. Let's say you're a new commander and you have learned the basics in your Sidewinder and you're just itching to get into something with a bit more teeth. If you have 3 million credits or less, you have 3 options. For around 1.7 million credits, you could easily purchase the Eagle. For a smidge more, around 2.3 million credits, you could get an Imperial Eagle. And for approximately 3.5 million credits, you could slip into a Viper Mark III. Remember, this includes all A-rated modules you'll need for bounty hunting. I know, I know, you have a hole burning in your pocket, and you just want to get out of that Sidewinder into something better and that eagle looks mighty tempting. And while it will be an upgrade to the Sidewinder, I would not recommend it as your first step. If you can, save up and get an Imperial Eagle, or even better, be patient and get a Viper Mark III. By far, the Viper Mark III is the best choice for new commanders. It has two medium hardpoints, two small hardpoints, and is fast, over 410 meters per second with an A-rated module, and even faster with enhanced performance thrusters if you can get them. The Viper Mark III is quite maneuverable without being too twitchy, and responds well for those learning to tackle flight assist off for the first time. The Viper also has relatively good shields and can take a bit more punishment than both Eagles, and obviously is able to use more armor. The Eagle only has three small hardpoints, is slower, around 370 meters per second with an A-rated thrusters, and is quite twitchy for new commanders. Don't get me wrong, the Eagle is very fun to fly, and once you've developed some solid piloting skills, it's a great choice to come back to and hone your piloting skills. Hardly anything can outturn it and can still be very effective in combat, even with just three small hardpoints. Same can be said with the Imperial Eagle. Although it is much faster than a standard Eagle, over 420 meters per second and has two small hardpoints and one medium hardpoint, it is however often let down by its limited power distributor and low capacity shield. I consider both eagles to be side grades, chips to be purchased at a later stage to advance your combat skills. And while there is absolutely no reason not to fly them straight after the sidewinder, I personally feel you're going to be much better off in a viper as your next stepping stone. The Viper Mark III is going to be much more easy to fly thanks to its more moderate and neutral handling and offers all round good protection and damage output from its weapons. So for me, the Viper Mark III gets my recommendation. Your next milestone could be around the 7 to 8 million credit mark, where you'll have another group of options to explore. These include the Imperial Courier, Viper Mark IV and the Diamondback Scout. 
The Imperial Courier is a great little ship with awesome shields, good maneuverability, good top speed and relatively good armor. It is very fun to fly but it takes a bit more skill to manage properly. Running out of engine boost does hamper the courier quite a bit and having three medium hard points with two on the far outer wings makes the courier less practical if you're wanting to experiment with fixed weapons. It's quite fast and very fun to fly and a lot of commanders love it with good reason but be prepared to work for your kills. The Viper Mark IV is basically a more heavily armoured version of the Mark III. The Mark IV is a hull tanker's delight with an armor rating of over 1100 when set up properly and can take a surprising amount of damage once the shields have dropped. But with similar weapon loadouts to the Viper Mark III, slightly more sluggish handling and having a much slower top boost speed makes the Viper more difficult for newer pilots to manage and can often feel like a downgrade from the Mark III. However, the Mark IV does have a dedicated following who appreciate that when flying correctly, it's a tough little ship that can take a good beating. This is a great ship to get into if you're planning to fly a Federal Assault ship later and want to develop your hull tanking skills. And finally, we have the Diamondback Scout, more commonly known as the DBS. Fast, fun and nimble, many commanders have come to love the DBS for its handling and small hull profile. It's hard to hit and even when you do hit it, it has relatively decent armor making it surprisingly tough to kill with a good pilot at the helm. In the old days, the DBS was often flown shieldless while using silent running and proved very effective in combat as it was difficult to see and hit. However, times have changed and while the DPS is still very fun to fly, it is limited in its combat effectiveness for the price. Many commanders still swear by it and I can understand why, but for new commanders, I feel it's not the best choice. So which one would I recommend to get when you reach this level? None. That's right, I said it, none. Look, I don't, don't panic, just hear me out. At this stage of the game, I would recommend getting a Cobra Mark III and do some passenger missions or cargo missions and keep the Viper Mark III. You will vary your gameplay a little and gain some valuable experience and money to get to the next level. The next level is where the game really shifts gear and is probably one of the most important parts of your combat career. If you absolutely must upgrade and want to try something new, then I would get the Imperial Courier. It's a great all-rounder, easy to fly for the most part, and will get the job done. Both the DBS and Mark IV are side grains in my opinion, but I do recommend at some point you do take a look at them, specifically the Mark IV if you want to learn hull tanking. Okay, so you've got the hang of combat, you've done some missions, and you feel pretty darn confident in the commander's chair. Your current combat ship seems underpowered, and you now want to take on more dangerous prey. Once you've hit the 20 million credits, this is where everything changes. Now, listen to this very, very, very carefully. Irregardless, if you're a new commander or a seasoned trader with over 1 billion credits in your account, do not skip this step. You will miss out on some of the most vital aspects of your combat training. There is only one choice. You're about to purchase a vulture. Yes. You, go and just get a Vulture. I can say this honestly, hand on my heart. The Vulture is by far the best combat ship in the game. Well, small combat ship. And will even give most medium ships and even large ships a good run for their money. Relatively small, extremely nimble, and reasonably fast are just some of the Vulture's attributes. The Vulture's main draw card is obviously having two large hard points and allows you to literally bring out the big guns. And while it can be very limiting only having two hard points, even a pulse laser build can be super effective. The Vulture's Achilles heel is the power plant and ever so slightly the power distributor. You are going to be constantly squeezing every last bit of power out of it, but with careful management of module power in the module tab and you can afford some flexibility. Even just engineering the power plant to level one overcharged is going to help a lot. Using power hungry weapons are going to drain the capacitor rather quickly, but this can be managed quite easily these days. The Vulture's thrusters will allow you to hold your position on enemy ships very effectively and allow you to make quick adjustments to compensate. The best thing about the Vulture is that it's so easy to fly effectively. You can be a relatively mediocre pilot, but the Vulture will make you feel like a combat ace. And it's this fact alone that makes the Vulture the premier choice to expand your combat knowledge in. It rewards you when you've performed complex maneuvers and encourages you to dabble a lot more in flight assist off techniques as it wants you to win. I remember spending months in the Vulture and what I've learned in those few months far exceeds anything I have learned in the following years. And while I said I wouldn't discuss engineering, engineer the Vulture and well, the Vulture just jumps to a whole other level, but I'll leave it at that. 
Now, if you're just starting out, it's going to be quite a while before you have enough credits for the next phase. And that's good. Use this time to develop your skills. However, if you are already Scrooge McDuck and have billions of credits to burn, don't be in a hurry to pass over the Vulture. Take your time and build up your skill level. Once you have reached around 70 to 100 million credits, you should be ready for the next step into medium ships. But this is where things get a bit complicated. Realistically, you have four choices I would recommend. The Federal Assault Ship, the Chieftain, the Fertile Lance and the Mamba. Yes, I am well aware of other options, but I feel these represent the top four of the medium sized ships for combat. The Federal Assault Ship is often one of the first ships most commanders find themselves in as it is a lot cheaper to A-rate than an FTL. And I think this natural progression makes a lot of sense. The fast is very easy to fly, is quite fast, manoeuvrable, has good boost turning control and a relatively decent loadout. One of its weaknesses however is its shield capacity, but this can be countered to a point with bow wheels and using the fast's natural ability to hull tank. The fast can take quite a pounding when the shields are dropped and when loaded out correctly, and its cockpit glass seems more rigid than other ships of its class. Its other weakness I feel is splitting the large hard point one on top and the other on the bottom. This can affect damage performance if you do not have the ship's nose aligned directly towards the target. Too far above the center and the bottom hard point won't be able to fire. Too far below and the top hard point won't be able to fire. While this doesn't seem like a big deal, I think cumulatively it does hamper the effectiveness of the FAS. The Chieftain is a recent addition to the shipyard and gives the FAS a good run for its money. The Chieftain is also extremely easy to fly, handles like a dream and is super fast at turning especially with flight assist off. With slightly more shielding and armor than a FAS, depending on its loadout, it also offers more protection with only a slight decrease in top speed. With good module protection and hull reinforcement protection and fast charging by weaves will mean when the shields drop you can keep fighting and only take a small amount of damage before the shields come back up, well depending on what you're fighting. Its loadout is interesting, having two large, one medium and three small hardpoints, as it can still deal quite a punch. Even though the three small lasers suffer a penalty to medium large ship's armor, using them as primarily thermal hardpoints is often a good way to get around this problem. However, loading up with more exotic weapons such as railguns, frag cannons and plasma accelerators sees the Chieftain turn into quite a savage little animal. The Fertile Lance is Elite Dangerous's most widely ship used for combat, with good reason. The FDL is incredibly well shielded, and using prismatic shield generators can yield some very high numbers. Couple that with 6 utility slots and shield numbers can skyrocket even more. However, it is lightly armoured, with about half the armour of both the Fast and the Chieftain. Speed is very good, but the handling can catch unwary pilots out, and in certain circumstances can feel like a downgrade to the Vulture. The FDL requires you to learn how to fly it properly. It's not the easiest ship to fly effectively, and mistiming your boost cycle in turn can be disastrous. That being said, once you've learned its quirks, the FDL is a scalpel. Use them flown correctly and it will reward you. Use it like a chainsaw in one hand and a beer in another, and it will punish you. A lack of internal slots and no military slots also compromises the FDL's combat survivability. But realistically, losing your shields shouldn't really happen, and if it does, you always have the option to run. The FDL's loadout is arguably potent and super flexible. Some commanders don't like it, but personally, I love it. The Class 4 slot is now very usable with the addition of Class 4 weapons, and allows the FDL to be loaded out in many different configurations effectively. Hardpoint locations are a mixed bag, having that big Class 4 hardpoint underneath, but the four Class 2 slots are in great positions. The lack of large hardpoints, I feel, does not compromise the FDL at all, however some commanders will disagree. One thing a lot of commanders seem to hate about the FDL is the centre bar down the middle of the cockpit window. Personally, for me, it doesn't bother me, but for some other commanders, it's like nails on a chalkboard, so something to maybe keep in mind. And finally, we get to the Mamba. She is the dragster of the bunch, fast in a straight line and can throw down quite a bit of firepower in a straight line. The Mamba can be extremely disappointing if taken at face value, but that's being a bit unfair. After spending some time in the cockpit, I'm coming to understand it a lot better, and I can appreciate for what it is. Its strongest features of course would be speed, and the fact that all of your hardpoints are top mounted, although a bit widely spread out. That being said, having one huge, two large and two small hardpoints means you can incorporate some serious firepower. A-rating the Mamba makes it flying more manageable, but you'll often find yourself fighting against a slow pitch rate. 
where the Mamba really shines is in long range sniping with a relatively stable platform and the ability to throw some serious firepower downrange, especially coupled with long range engineered weapons. It shields fall between the FDL and the Chieftain and is slightly more armor than an FDL, so it's relatively quite tough, but you might want to consider running bi-weaves and stacking lots of hull armor modules. However, and I really do need to point this out, engineer the Mamba, especially the drives and power distributor, and its whole personality changes quite dramatically. What was once a nightmare to try and brawl up close in, can now, when flown correctly, sink its teeth into its prey quite effectively. It's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about looking into engineering at a later stage. So which one would I recommend jumping into from the Vulture? Until recently, I would have suggested the FAS, but now I think the Alliance Chieftain is your best choice. I simply cannot recommend the FDL or Mamba for new commanders coming from the Vulture. And not because the Chieftain costs much less to A-rate, although that is a very good reason within itself. The FDL and even more so the Mamba are not easy to fly to their full potential. That's why a lot of pilots do not like the FDL and especially the Mamba. Both ships are very unforgiving and will feel like a downgrade to the Vulture when flying them for the first time. I remember a long time ago coming out of the Vulture, all excited to buy my first FDL and head out into a res site, only to walk away from my first hour of combat thinking the FDL sucked. But that's because really, I was not flying the FDL anywhere near to its potential. The Chieftain on the other hand is very easy to fly, and more importantly, it's very fun to fly. And while it's comparable to a FAS, I genuinely believe the Chieftain is a better choice. Better all-round protection, just as easy to fly as the FAS, possibly even more fun to fly than the FAS, better hardpoint locations, and arguably a better loadout. Don't get me wrong, if you prefer the FAS for some specific reason, then by all means, give it a go. But after spending many, many, many hours in both ships, the Chieftain just feels like the better choice. Well, at least for me. When you're ready to move on from the Chieftain or FAS, then your next choice should be the FDL. I made the mistake of jumping straight in from the Vulture to the FDL, and it all ended up being a bit of a shock. I hated the FDL. I was very tempted to go back to my Vulture, but I persisted as I heard the FDL was the best combat ship in Elite Dangerous. It took about two to three weeks in the cockpit and learning how to fly to its maximum potential did I come to understand why. By far, the FDL, when flying correctly, is the best combat ship in Elite Dangerous. Even though it is hampered by poor optional internal slots and light armor, its ability to adapt to multiple mission types is impressive. Even with poor armor, the FDL's shields are extremely impressive. Run by ways for rapid charging, good capacity shields, run A-rated for good balance, or go full prismatics for some absolutely insane shield numbers. Couple that with six utility slots that can be loaded up with boosters and it just gets even better. You should never really ever get to the point of losing shields. And even if you did, you can easily run with a good top boost speed. Engineer the FDL and there is very little that can outright challenge it, unless you're going up against an opponent with a much higher skill level. As for the Mamba, I think it's a ship that is a bit confused about what it wants to be. I think there is potential there, especially possibly as a Thargoid Hunter. I think it's still definitely worth having a look at, but more as a further addition to your fleet as opposed to an upgrade to another ship. But for the moment, I cannot recommend the member of the FDL, especially for newer pilots. Also, the fact that it really does need some engineering to become more effective is another point taken away, which is a shame because there is something about it that I do like, but I'm not sure exactly what that is. Well, there you go. Those are my suggestions for ship progression. I hope that some of you might find that useful. So if there's a bit of jumping around in this video, but there was a lot to cover and I knew this was going to be a super long video. If you'd like to see a similar video made for large ships, then please thumbs up the video. If I get enough likes, I will put it on my list. Anyway, this is Vindicator Jones signing off. Thanks for watching and I shall see you out there in the big black.